What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case RK's video. On this one today, we are looking at the newer style two player pedestal on a 120 inch screen. So I have another order that came in off of OfferUp. Again, I'm on OfferUp, Facebook Marketplace. You could fill out a form on my website, it goes right to my email. So if you are looking at any arcade cabinet or an arcade build, you could always fill out the form. It goes right to my email and we'll get in touch. This one coming straight out of OfferUp, going out to Brian from Harlem, New York. Um, originally born and raised here in Harlem. Moved, I forgot where exactly, but then he came back to Harlem. Um, so basically he found me on OfferUp. He messaged me on a pedestal ad that I had, which is if you go back like maybe a year or two on my videos, you'll see how like my jank pedestal, I call it like the budget pedestal, which was a Game Room Solutions two player control deck on a kind of V-shaped end table to make it look decorative. Um, he liked it, but he did want to do some custom artwork. And I said, you know what? Game Room Solutions just kind of launched this new two player kind of pedestal cabinet. Figured, hey, if you're down to try it out, I'll hook you up. Let's give it an order. So he actually liked the two player pedestal and we have it in our hands. Now I haven't seen many photos or videos of their new design. Uh, a couple of pros and cons. It is fairly you know, awesome. It is a very cool pedestal. Um, this specific unit right now, I do have for Brian, we went with the Pandora's box. So this is running a Pandora's box 18S Pro. I did do the dedicated four way joystick on it. We do have the Z533 sound system on this. So the sound system is very loud on this. And um, let's just take a closer look. Again, not many pictures or videos of their new cabinet design. So I did get excited because Brian wanted a pedestal and it's my first time ever doing this certain type of pedestal. And I'll flip the camera around because you guys don't like selfie mode. Let's take a closer look at this pedestal. So now this is pretty cool. Brian does have a request. He did want it in a pedestal. He does have a flat screen TV uh in his place that he is so he kind of wanted to have a cabinet where it's a showpiece so it is decorative but he also wanted to kind of tuck it away into a closet if he ever had like an event or if it was just you know he didn't want it seen so i figured the pedestal was definitely the easiest way to go it is pretty compact pretty nice size again two player control deck i do believe game Solutions does have the option of a four player deck but this one specifically is a two player deck Again, running a Pandora's box 18S. This is my personal 120 inch projector. Um, so I figured what better way to show off a pedestal than hooking it up to my projector. Now, basically when we were going through artwork, he did like my kind of retro collab that I do a lot for bar tops. Um, I did remove a couple of characters because I felt it was too cluttered, um, but he did want to kind of give it some kind of graffiti tag kind of look to it. And uh, this is what we came up with. So went through maybe about three designs. Um, he did make a big deal about Harlem. He did want, you know, Harlem on it. I kind of had the idea of a kind of tagged up kind of artwork. And uh, I think it came out pretty cool. So again, we got Harlem born and raised on the kick plate game zone. And I normally don't do this, but he said, hey Vic, listen, you know, any way to help out a local business and to help you out, feel free to put your logo on it. So I said, okay, I'm not going to do it too big. I actually had it smaller. And then he said, Hey Vic, just blow it up a little bit. Let's get you some promo. So I thought, all right, cool. I normally don't put like my logo like that, but he wanted it and he allowed me to do it. So I do have my game case arcades there and I have the official logo right there. So pretty cool. Again, the kick plate control panel up top. Basically I took a standard MAME wallpaper background, which is a bunch of like street fighter SNK stuff basically a bunch of like game logos and I basically tagged it. So I put Harlem over it. I did the whole burn on Photoshop. This way it kind of looks like it was actually painted over. So it's not fully, you know, it didn't knock out this word street fighter. It's, it's as if it was painted over. So pretty cool details. So Harlem forever. Again, I got my little logo on the bottom, right? With his permission on the right side, got a little artsy Added another Harlem tag to it and again i did have more characters originally but i took it out i felt it was too cluttered but so far i think it looks awesome so again, we have a two-player pedestal led'd out i did leds right underneath the control panel deck here got another row of leds right underneath to really illuminate the kick plate 
and there's a row of LEDs on the actual like floorboard here. So definitely LED it out. We got LED buttons on this. He requested all white buttons for player one with a red joystick top. All red buttons player two with a white joystick top. I got the dedicated four way here for Pac-Man and Galaga. And we got our coin and our studs. Again, all LEDs, LED buttons. And again, there is your two player pedestal running Pandora's box 18S Pro. So this is the one thing about pedestals. You gotta keep in mind that like, you know, you do have a plug and then you do have HDMI going to your screen. So on this one here specifically, I'm using a six foot cord, uh, but I do have for Brian, I did order a 25 foot HDMI cord. So that's in a box separate. Just to take a look at the back of it. Not too bad, I did have some LED string left. So I figured out, I'm not sure how far away from the wall he's gonna be, but at least you could get some glow. Um, again, big things about pedestals is that there is cords, you know, not like this. I kind of just really did this to quickly shoot this video, but you gotta remember you do have a power cord and you will have an HDMI cord. Now this is again my first time using this specific cabinet. Game Room Solutions probably launched this, I would say about maybe four months ago. Um, it's, it's, it's got its pros and cons. Um, I really wish they made this out of three quarter inch MDF. This is half inch MDF. It is sturdy, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. It's not like it's gonna be flimsy. It's not like it's gonna fall apart. I just kind of like the feel and the weight of a three quarter inch kind of control panel and everything. Um, I mean, me personally, cause I've been around so many cabinets, I could just, you know, see half inch. I'm a big fan of three quarter, but you know, other than that, it's pretty solid. Good, you know, shout out to Ryan for figuring out, making sure to put this kind of floor plate. Um, it does add stability to it and it's pretty good. It's not that big of a piece. Definitely, I do feel like now, with this generation, a lot of people have like Funko Pops or some kind of cool stuff that they could put underneath it. So, you know, you do have basically storage there. If we pop the hood of the control panel, got everything here. So we got our Pandora's box. Again, this is one thing that I do notice about the half inch. Uh, you know, I'm, I'd like to kind of hold this with my hands here because I do feel like this is a lot of weight just on these two, you know, four screws. So again, half inch, I do feel like that's a lot of weight just being held up by that. So I usually always like to leave my hands here, but LED'd out. Again, you can kind of see my buttons and wiring set up. Again, Pandora's box on this, the Z533 audio. So I do have my control knob here, totally clears any wires. Same thing here for the Pandora's box. None of these wires touch the fans and such. Um, a couple of mods I had to do to the cabinet, but before we go into mods again, just checking out the kind of wiring setup to it. So now a quick note about like the pedestal itself and what Game Room Solutions is doing. If you see carefully here, there's actually two separate orders. Um, basically you have your pedestal, which is basically from the artwork. Anything with the artwork is pedestal. Up above here is the actual control panel itself. So uh, Game Room Solutions always had a control panel, which I do definitely love because it is three quarter inch. This is their newer style with this half inch. Um, basically you could order the control panel. Uh, basically it's this piece here, you know, and up, or you could just get the pedestal alone or you get both. That's what we, that's what I did here. Um, so cool notes about the actual control panel itself. They do have four players. You could do two players like I did. So now it's cool about their newer style control panels that it's pretty big, uh, compared to the other one, as far as depth, it's a little bit wider. So that's a pretty cool note but they do have a lot of different configurations, especially for buttons. So you could always add the dedicated four way. You could add the trackball. You could choose between a six button layout, an eight button layout, a seven button layout. So this kind of control panel, they do actually have a lot of options as far as buttons. So definitely you could put a PC inside of this. All my PC builds, they do suggest a button cutout. So definitely I do see this control panel being good. My only downside, it might be minor, is I wish it was three quarter inch. So now again, uh, Game Room Solutions, they always do right by me. They always fix my orders. This one, we had a little bit of a hiccup, minor ones, but some stuff to note. So when you do look on their website, they have this like complete set. Uh, basically you get the control panel and then there's a checkbox to add the pedestal with the artwork. They do have a checkbox that will give you the buttons and I think it's like $55. Uh, 
couple things to note about that. I click that checkbox, I place the order, and then in the order I wrote that I do want Chrome LED buttons. They sent me non-Chrome LED buttons, but also they did send me, and I hate to say it, they sent me like the Amazon style button, which is the button with the micro switch inside the button. So it's not like how I usually do with the actual micro switch outside. Uh, it's like an all-in-one button with the very skinny heads. Um, so I quickly messaged uh, Game Room Solutions. They got back to me, they said, hey Vic, listen, the button kit that you bought for $55, that's what you get. It's basically the non-chrome um, with uh, the Dragon encoders, like the USB en encoders. And I said, Michael, I said, listen, I'm doing a Pandora's box build. I don't need the encoders, please. I do need the chrome trim button. So if you are looking for chrome trim buttons, um, or I guess I should say the regular micro switch buttons, I don't suggest that you click that box. You probably wanna make a separate order for the buttons. I might be wrong, but that's what I ran into on that. Um, the other minor hiccup, artwork. Again, they, they basically supplied me the file. I made the artwork. Um, as you can see clearly with my artwork, you know, you do have here, like I put the jab, the strong, the fierce. I like to put that like the, like the regular Street Fighter style artwork. So in my artwork, it clearly shows six buttons. They sent me a plexiglass and the control panel is cut for eight buttons. Um, before I was starting this video, I didn't realize it, but you could actually see the two buttons here. Which in all honesty, is not that big of a deal because it is future proof, but as you can see on my LEDs, you kind of do see through it. Um, so, you know, I kind of felt bad that I clearly made artwork for six buttons, but they sent me a deck with eight buttons. So there was actually like holes here and I'm like, I can't put two buttons here. It's gonna look weird without like the label, you know, the box art. Um, so basically it took them a couple of days to send me a new Plexi and the new Chrome trim buttons. Again, a little bit of a minor hiccup. Uh, basically when I place the order for the next one, I'll be sure to go in depth and in detail as far as saying, hey, I want six button cutouts. Um, please be sure to do six button cutouts. Um, but all in all, Nice cabinet. I mean, it sounds weird that I end it with that, but it is a nice cabinet. The only big thing I did notice with this, there are no speaker holes. There's no speaker grills. Um, kind of a letdown, but with me and my power tools, I could show you what I did. And I probably suggest Ryan to do it for the future. I basically cut circle holes. So again, I am running Z5, Z533s. Basically decased the speaker, and I basically did a left and a right. There is my speaker. So definitely sounds way cool. It is hidden. Um, when I, I first was gonna put the actual speaker like there, like in the case there, but I said, you know what? Somebody's gonna be standing here, they might kick it, uh, and then who knows, puncture and rupture the speaker. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna make a hole and cut down on it. So if I actually open up the rear, which is, again, pretty nice, can't lie. Now that I zoomed out a little bit, you could see one of my speakers there and the other one right there. Again, not too bad, pretty good space. I mean, again, you can see it literally just fits the subwoofer of a Z533. So seeing the size of this, you could definitely put a desktop, maybe a Dell Optiplex inside of this. So as far as the inside of the back of the cabinet, pretty fair. Again, always try to keep all wiring clean zip ties we got the power strip all down and i always get the power switch and again just to show you like the half inch wood mdf on it i mean again it's not horrible it's just i'm i do like my three quarter inch i wish it was three quarter inch again all in all great looking cabinet again pedestal uh you know you will see basically the four cam screws that hold this base plate in so really big deal that he made this, this, this base plate or else the whole pedestal would have basically tipped. Um, we got chrome T-molding on it and it's great. The only big thing I definitely would notice and he doesn't say it in his videos, when you are doing the T-molding for the sides and especially if you do get the control panel, you're gonna wanna put the control panel all together first and then T-mold. What I mean by that is you're gonna wanna T-mold this completely. I didn't know that. So as you can see, we do have the cut here 
And as you can see, I do have the cut there. So I really kind of wish I would have known that. That's kind of my error. But I showed photos to the customer. It's not really that big of a deal. Also, the big thing also, if you want to take the control panel out, then you would need this cut. So it's a hit or miss. Um, it looks proper. It looks right. It's not that big of a deal. But some that he probably should have really noted. What's really good about this, and I'll put the camera down on the couch, is the standing height on this is right up to like pan level. So this is definitely a good height. I'm not arching my back to reach the control. So definitely a really great height. I believe, honestly, if you put the older first gen control panel, it might be a little bit higher, but this still is a great height. So now again, checking out as far as the Pandora's box. So just load up a quick game quick random game of king of fighters again 4,000 games easy pandora's boxes are very easy definitely user friendly a kid could come over here and just wail on these buttons they won't really mess up anything you can't really mess up anything so uh if you're coming if you're looking for a system that's super easy the kids going to use it they just you just want to plug it in and call it a day the pandora's box is the easiest way to do it again dedicated four-way so this is in parallel to this i have a lot of people that message me that uh so this is basically wired to this going to the pandora's box so this could be your player one if you think about it and as far as in parallel this is buttons one and two so one and two one and two just like my bar top video i showed you before um you know player two it was very close to the four-way that i made Whereas this one's really like close to player one. So no need to worry about that, but definitely a very cool feature to have these dedicated four ways. I'm now in the habit of just automatically suggesting dedicated four ways all the time. Uh, so now real quick, I'm going to load up some Galaga. Again, Pandora's box has this great search function. You can literally search the game that you want. So this is running final burn alpha, press player one start. Final burn alpha does not stretch the screen and I am able to use left and right, my dedicated four-way and the first button. So I'm gonna have to kneel for this. <laughs> I have the volume low on the Z31, Z533, I should say. And awesome stuff. So again, four-way. Again, I could use the eight-way if I wanted to. So it's not like it turns off a joystick. It's either or, but this right here is definitely good for Pac-Man and I would definitely say Donkey Kong. Now, if I do wanna bump up the volume, we could raise up the control panel we have the rocker switch here what's great about this is that there is headphone jacks and audio in so if he wanted to just have this as a regular sound system you could do that left side here does have bass knob because the subwoofer on this is pretty powerful so definitely cool one quick thing to note about a mod that i had to do i never cut these uh cords for the the rockers so i actually had to make I'd actually make the hole here to pass this through a little bit bigger. You can kind of see my cut, but this is always closed, so no need to really worry about that. Let's bump up the volume a little bit. I'm right now in a track mode, and so far so good. All right, so real quick, I'll leave you there. Uh, I'm gonna put a coin in, and I will load up real quick. I was playing it before, but I'll load up some Marvel versus Capcom. Bump up the volume on this. So again, this thing does get loud. I always do easy. Which is kind of give you a visual on where I am. Ready.
cool. So big thing is that you could also use the audio coming out of your TV. Um, so HDMI, you could basically just lower the music, uh, lower the volume on the TV if you wanted. Uh, if I'm gonna exit right now, I can just hold player one start. It says press B for exit game and I can exit. I get this question a lot and I have to do it for this video, but a lot of people do ask me, uh, how does Marvel vs. Capcom 2 play on this? Um, what's funny about Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on the Pandora's box is that it's not labeled Marvel vs. Capcom 2. It's labeled Cartoon Hero versus Capcom 2 and it's running on the Dreamcast. So I'm gonna bump the volume on this so we can actually see and we'll hear the audio. So I'll make sure that you get it clear. Yeah, you do. So with the Sega, you kind of have to just go through this menu, just press select, one too fast. So I'm gonna again raise the volume so you could hear it. I get this question a lot. Marvel vs. Capcom 2, will it play it? So this is not running the actual Marvel vs. Capcom 2 arcade port, which would be Naomi. Um, this is running the Dreamcast version. You kind of see, right now I do have the Pandora's box set to coin play, so it does say like how many minutes are left, because this is a console game. Um, I'll just do arcade mode. I won't do two player. Um, I just want to get this. So we're going to raise the volume. I always use cable. Uh, Ryu? The Ryu or Ryu? Again, I'm just going to play it so we can hear the audio and see the screen. Okay, so I'm actually gonna bring you up close here because there's a couple of things. I mean, I literally played a Marvel vs. Capcom 2 arcade cabinet. Uh, again, using the Dreamcast, the buttons on this specific game are definitely different. Uh, as you can see before, I was trying to do like a, it should be a three player super, like all three, especially when you have like more than three on your bottom left power meter. You should have a three player super, but I couldn't hit that. Not to mention like with cable, I had to press button three and four like to initiate the super. And I guess like a Hadouken, there was a couple of things. So definitely things to note. As far as the actual gameplay is not too, too bad. It's just there is a minor graphical line. You can kind of see it on cable. Um, that's the only thing I honestly see. I guess it's not on all the characters, um, but it really depends on the frame, but you do see kind of a jagged line. 
it's definitely better than what I've seen on a Raspberry Pi Dreamcast. Uh, so this is definitely cool. Definitely no audio stutter. It is pretty smooth. It's just, I'm not too sure how the buttons are, are mapped out. So you're gonna have to probably learn how to do, you know, the combos and the supers. And I'm on easy. Um, you know, just like Marvel vs. Capcom, the easy on this should be just the top three. And it should basically just punch in. As you can see right now, four minutes past, it says here, insert coin. So I could insert a coin and press start. And we're back. So as you can see there, again, a, a super really should be just a three, but it changes the character sometimes. It's something that you have to definitely learn. So I do get this question a lot about Marvel versus Capcom 2. It's playable. It's not the Naomi, it is the Sega Dreamcast version. If I do want to exit, I just hold down player one start. There's a thing that it says, press B to exit and we exit. Cool. So now again, this does play console. So this right here is the PSP. I do know that one game so far doesn't work correctly on this and that's NBA Live. This does have NBA Live on it. Again, 4,000 games, not all of them will work nor I mean, I personally don't import the ROMs for this. It's a board that's made. So this is Metal Slug XX. This is a PSP game, so I'm kind of navigating through. And the big thing I do want to just basically show off, let me just pick a character, I guess, is basically there was a moment where, again, you have to insert a coin to continue. And basically you press the coin button. When I press the coin button and I press player one start, it doesn't add the time. You might have to come here and either press player two start and it will add it. The other way you could do is that you could hold down player one start and then it says button A to insert coin and now I inserted coin. So a couple things to know. I mean, it's a quick kind of lesson you learn. But right now playing some PSP. I do have my volume off. And again, this is somewhere you just kind of have to learn what button does what so this game right here the shoot button is button three again it is the psp version this does give you an option to switch guns button six interesting look at that cool so pretty cool and again this is a psp i mean on a pandora's box playing psp games it's definitely a no-brainer not a raspberry pi can't do this now again, just looking at like a couple of the games, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of games. If I go back into our menu here, uh, you know, you got Tekken. There are like, you see like this Pro Evolution Soccer, like I wouldn't think this would work correctly. I'm not even gonna bother opening it. But this one, um, Counter and Bodega told me that this game right here doesn't work. You could navigate the menu, but you can't move the character. So this again is a PSP game. Um, it might work actually if you put a Xbox controller or a USB um, device controller into it. But as far as arcade sticks, it's not mapped correctly. Basically, the PSP had the D-pad and the analog stick. There's two sticks. They probably just mapped out the D-pad. Um, but, I mean, that's one out of 4,500 games. Um, so, not too bad. Again, you even got N64. So, I definitely always do it. And I would love to see what it looks like uh, if I ran some NFL Blitz on a 20 120 inch screen so again we're going to load up some nfl blitz please excuse my slurring it is late it's like 2 a.m but i got to get this to brian tomorrow morning check it out we got nfl blitz that's all this is always a big game that shocks me uh when i do these pandora's boxes because it's nfl blitz uh you don't you won't find this like on a raspberry pi working at all and it's basically a game that you're going to learn the button combos too. This does have NBA Jam, it does have your arcade game. So definitely a very cool cabinet, especially with a Pandora's box. This is the budget kind of cabinet. Uh, Pandora's box, I don't wanna say the word cheap. It is the cheapest arcade system that you could get. It is the cheapest board you could get, system you could get, but this plays like real classics. Like everybody has played NFL Blitz at one point, if I could throw the ball, <laughs> but there you guys have it. This is Brian's Harlem Born and Raised Harlem Forever pedestal.
Now what's great about these systems is that basically if you are done playing, you can literally just flip the switch in the back and call it a day. That is it. The two player pedestal Harlem born and raised. Brian bro, it's coming to you tomorrow.